My name is Jan Jolowski, working at ICLEI Local Governments for Sustainability. On 13th and 14th of March 2024, ICLEI and the City of Lisbon will organize the 11th Procura Plus Conference, highlighting how public procurement can contribute to more sustainable, social, circular and innovative societies. Today we will talk about that with Willem Janssen, Public Procurement Law Professor at Groningen University and Utrecht University. Willem, would you like to introduce yourself a bit further? Yes, uh, thank you so much, John, for, for having me and for discussing this um, um, this initiative today and the role that sustainable public procurement uh, uh, law and sustainable public procurement can play in general. Um, that's really where my focus lies when it comes to my research and my teaching is over the years, I've, I've really tried to look for uh, uh, topical discussions about what role does the law play when it comes to sustainability transitions, particularly in light of, of public procurement, uh, uh, public procurement law. Uh, thank you very much. So yes, the world cities and public authorities are facing major environmental, economic and social challenges. It requires substantial transformation across all aspects of society. Procurement has to play a key role in this transformation, but its use in driving the transition remains patchy at best. Why do you think that is? Yeah, one, but it's an incredibly valid question, I think, because um, on the one hand, we really experience this urgency, right? We're facing a lot of challenges, the, the sustainable development goals, even emphasize the role of public procurement in, in, in goal 12.7. We see the EU Green Deal with very ambitious um, targets. Uh, Europe needs to be the first climate neutral continent by 2050. CO2 emissions need to drop, economic growth needs to be uh, or not rely on the use of resources. So we have some very ambitious goals. We also see that procurement can play a role, but in, in many ways, and uh, it's um, and even though that there are very nice flagship projects happening and there's a lot of willingness and ambition, um, we're also seeing that there's still obstacles on the road towards really sustainable public procurement. And I think that there's a multifold uh, a very difficult answer. They call it a wicked problem, right? There's lots of variables to be able to to peel it off. But I, let me just highlight three at least, or why I think that that this could be the case is 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 one because public procurement can play a role, but it cannot be the ultimate answer to everything, right? It it should be placed in the palette of all the other ways in which society can transform, right? It's also up to businesses themselves without the involvement of the government to transform. It's up to consumers to do so. And it's up to all of us, including the government, of course, when it purchases on the market, is to create a more sustainable society. Um, but one of the things that I think is always still the case is that we're seeing a landscape of front runners and a landscape of those that um, who somewhat lack behind, right? And the issue here is, or I think perhaps the challenge is, is how do we close that gap between those front runners and the ones that still need to jump on the bandwagon? And I think for that, we just simply need uh, two things at least. And, and, and we'll talk about law a bit later, I'm mm -hmm. sure. But one thing is, I think, more clearer financing and a, an acknowledgement that sustainable public procurement, to some extent, initially costs more, right? Uh, but you'll win that back in due course, right? If you award contracts based on lowest life cycle costs, you've really thought about the life cycle of a product. And I think that means that even though your investments and budgets might be higher for public spending, I think that will still lead to more sustainable uh, uh, infrastructure, sustainable ICT that in the end uh, becomes more uh, uh, more cheaper, right? Yeah, so in and the long term, you have so fi more financial benefits, basically. For sure. In the long yeah. term, I think uh, that is definitely the case. And on top of that, uh, what we really need is a, a stronger focus on public procurement professionalization, right? When we see that a lot of contracts in Europe are still awarded based on lowest price, when we see that a lot of the opportunities that the law provides are not being used, I think what we really need to focus on is training opportunities, uh, best practices exchanges, and I think the Commission does a great job, the European Commission, uh, there in, in trying to uh, bring big buyers together, but also having a, a, a procurement practices platform in trying to get whatever knowledge is there from those front runners and those well willing uh, um, contracting authorities that have uh, taken the fore when it comes to green and social public procurement and bringing that knowledge and spreading it out uh, more broadly. Um, and, and lastly, uh, yeah, we need to look at the law. Uh, what role does it play? Um, is it an obstacle to this transition? 
or should it change uh, for better and actually become a guiding process as uh, in safeguarding equality and transparency, of course, but also ensuring that we can still develop in a sustainable manner? Yeah, you also recently published a book about this. There is, of course, a changing legal framework for strategic procurement, and it is moving much more towards mandatory requirements. Do you have any idea how this might work out and will it be effective and will the public procurement professionals be able to deal with it in practice? Yeah, that's, it's, a, it's a tricky question because it's really a moving target at the moment. So the book we published, um, um, Mandatory Sustainability Requirements uh, in EU Public Procurement Law, tries to, for the first time, tries to discuss this development. Because what we saw and where we're coming from is regulation that's based on um, how to procure, right? It, within the internal market, we have rules that focus on achieving equality and transparency and proportionality. But it never said much about what to buy, only how to buy. And these um, mandatory requirements are very much coming out of the EU Green Deal that I mentioned before. So we already had the Clean Vehicles Directive, which had technical specifications in the past. Now it has targets for contracting authorities. But the discussion we're having now is that we're seeing over a dozen proposals or, or already accepted pieces of legislation which have either product specific rules, targets, or minimum mandatory requirements, which means that contracting authorities in Europe will soon not be able to choose for low price, bad for the environment options, but they will be forced to, to, to uh, contract based on sustainability considerations. And what's difficult, and to coming back to your question uh, about how will this work out, is it effective or not, is that what we're seeing now is that that's very fragmented. Right? We're seeing rules on deforestation, we're seeing rules on net zero, rules on exclusion grounds, uh, specific award criteria, and there's lots more to mention there. So one of the things that um, we did in our research was try to map this right, and show where is it heading. And it seems like we're really heading towards more mandatory requirements. But what's needed now is really a focus on what works in what sector. So in what sector do we need what specific type of rules? And that is something that is often lacking uh, still. And that, I think, concerns me as well, because ultimately practice will need to make this work, right? So contracting authorities, economic operators in their uh, joint enigma where they work together to get public contracts off the ground. Um, uh, and the rules there will really need to be effective. And um, that's something that, that requires more work in the future, I think. And is there a way to universalize this so that it is not just sector dependent? So in a way, one approach could be, or at least the most prominent question is not so much, should we move towards mandatory requirements? Because I think there's a clear call for that. But secondly is how do we regulate it, right? Yeah. How do we regulate? Is it general norms or do we need those sector specific norms? And I think what we need is uh, a good understanding of how those markets work what's available on the market, right? Where is the status quo? Because the law <clears throat> should not limit the sustainability transitions. And instead it should be allowing those uh, markets to flourish, right? Yeah. And I think, um, so there is not one size fits all, um, but we do need to be mindful is that all those rules work in practice, but also link up nicely together. Yeah, so that would also require much more market dialogues from public procurers and things like that. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, how uh, how do you think networks and conferences like Procura Plus play an important role in this further professionalization and sustainability of public procurement? I think a very important role. Right. It's a platform in which many of the uh, uh, professionals that are part of this ecosystem of public procurement come together, in which they can talk about their own struggles. Right. In which they can share best practices, and I think also here. Um, academia plays in a very important role. I think the role of academics should be that they're actively involved in these discussions, right? That they uh, share their thoughts, that they share their research, right? And perhaps also that they make their research a little bit more uh, uh, bite size, right? Perhaps a bit more accessible, right? When we talk about the book, right? Uh, the reason why we're talking now is also to, to, to bring that, that, that content a bit more to light and to bring some appetizers to the floor. Yeah. 
It's also one of the reasons why in the past I've and 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 still work with with colleagues on a podcast about public procurement law, in which we really try to bring academic discussions to the floor of professionals and then also to discuss it with them. Because I think in an ecosystem approach where we work together, where practice, uh, contracting authorities, uh, economic operators can all bring together their uh, experiences and their best practices together with the academic world and governments, I think then that's where we gain uh, a better understanding of public procurement law, of uh, sustainable public procurement and how to best move forward in the future. That's great. Yeah, thank you very much. And yes, this is indeed one of the aims of the Procura Plus conference where we will have, for example, market lounges where people can discuss uh, public procurement on different topics with different stakeholders from different uh, sectors, basically, and from different parts of society. So yeah, we are looking forward to seeing everyone at the Procura Plus conference. Uh, thank you very much, Willem. Thank you so much.